Adam, what's the reason for one of the columns? Bug or no bug? And like, what's the reaction when other people see them? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you could have um, so reaction of others. Um, let's think of like some adjectives that would describe people. So you said scared. Um, what would be some like synonyms in some ways of scared that you could kind of throw in here as well? Not that there's anything wrong with the word, just trying to come up with some other options to go along with it. Disgusted. Ashamed. Come on, Zach, don't turn into a bug. How dare you? That kind yeah, of reaction. Though. Okay. Um, well, we are, but I, I just from like a vocab standpoint, and again, not that these are vocab words of, but one of the things that we work on is trying to come up with maybe some more precise words. And again, not that Adam is wrong by saying they're scared, but... I'd say it's a little stronger to go they are disgusted when they see him. Um, I would say there's probably an R word. When they see him, they are absolutely repulsed. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm sorry? Because he gets up. I missed the last part. He did something wrong. So like it's, something, it's like a deserving pun. I'm not arguing with you, like, who would have punished him? Like, does dad go, you're now a bug, or? Don't have a detail to support it, but we could go some kind of punishment. Punishment or something. Luke? Uh, the way he opened the door to leave. As a reason to be a bug? Yeah. How does he? Uh-huh. So he... Turns key with mouth rather than actually using his hands. Since we would be under the assumption if he is a bug that he does not have any hands. Delena? Okay. So we could even kind of add on to that part number one where, come on, there we go. Number one, what's happened to his voice in more general terms? It's changed, so voice has changed. And then you get a description that his voice sounds like an animal or some other kind of critter that would be going on. Logan, yeah. you having issues? Yeah. Uh, I got it. Okay, good job. Did you have one? Oh, for the next one. All right, yeah. Reasons not to be a bug? Yeah. <laughs> what would that be? Oh, uh... His vision wasn't like impaired. Like he said that outside of his brain and stuff, but like he can see it. Anyone know how bugs see? Oh, wow. It's like their eyes are mirrors. Um, and it might it might vary a little bit from from insect to insect or species to species, but you have larger eyes, so there's like front and then also kind of side. Um, someone said anything like mirrors, where it, it's, it's very like fragmented, where you see kind of little bits of things all over, kind of depending probably upon the bug itself. Fancy like word. Mm -hmm. okay. um, he could still see. And again, not that we've been a bug, but what's another human quality that would be going on up here? Thank you. Jillian? Yeah, I don't know if that's right, but I said he's still thinks and like Yeah, thinks. He has like emotions, feelings. Now, again, I can't say as a bug, you know, I've ever been one and have communicated with one and go, hey, what's going on in your head or anything like that? But we kind of think of the idea of being able to think emotions, feelings, of those being very much human qualities or characteristics. Tyler, did you have another one? No. No. Okay. I think it kind of depends. Like, 
could, but they have quote unquote two eyes, but it's like there's multiple yeah. parts to those things, which I'm yeah. not going to be, yeah, I think kaleidoscope would be a good description for it. Um, Or he at least tries to. Now there there is a little bit of an issue, and the, and he would he would actually be speaking German or Czech because it, it does ultimately get translated. He thinks he's at least speaking to him. Zelena brought up the point that you know his, his kind of sounds like an animal. It doesn't seem that people really understand him necessarily properly. Now at the same time, you can certainly have a human who is speaking and thinking and talking, but that doesn't mean that we always necessarily can understand. Think of like a two year old, or people will talk about one-year-old babies can think, can communicate, or have ideas, but they're not able to actually say them. Yeah. So, like, episode of, like, a imaginary daydream? Yeah. Okay. And we don't really have anything that's going to support it, but it would be a possibility kind of along the ideas of what uh, Tommy, I think, said, like it could be a punishment for, for something. So good question would be, has it happened before? Anyone else have a reason why not a bug? There's one thing early on detail that would really make me question whether or not he's a bug and put in the eye. I told you I don't think he is, and it's more of a dream as the reason why he would not be a bug. Giant. It's not potion. Besides that, I'm thinking of something from the book. That, yeah, that could be a detail for uh, the whole dream sequence, you know, where it's kind of hazy, it's rainy, and, and whatnot. So I do think there is some dream like imagery. Um, if, this is a big if, if you woke up as a bug, what would be your reaction? Well, I mean, I mean, you know, when he when he wakes up, he does see that he is a bug. Um, you know, here, just take a look at the opening page, page three. One morning, as Gregor Samsa was waking up from anxious dreams, you know, dreams, he discovered that in bed he had changed into a monstrous verminous bug. So he takes a look around. Hmm, I'm a bug. We lay on his armor hard back and saw as he lifted his head up a little, his brown arched abdomen divided into rigid bone-like sections. From this height, the blanket just about ready to slide off completely could hardly stay in place. His numerous legs, pitifully thin in comparison to the rest of his circumference, flickered helplessly before his eyes. What's happened to me, he thought. It was no dream. His room, a proper room for a human being, only somewhat too small, lay quietly between the four well-known walls. Above the table on which the unpacked collection of sample cloth of sample cloth goods was spread out, Samson was a traveling salesman, hung the picture which he had cut out of the illustrated magazine a little while ago and set in a pretty gilt frame. Um, what's his reaction? <laughs> yeah, like next paragraph, you know, let's help the window, dreary weather, you know, made him quite melancholy. Why don't I keep sleeping for a little longer and forget all this foolishness? You wake up as a bug, let me just put my head back down and it'll all be okay. If you wake up and something has happened where, you know, it's not even this drastic, but like there has been some kind of change. Some people wake up, you see a pimple on your head, you're gonna start freaking out, let alone the fact that you have six pitifully thin legs, an armored back, an abdomen that is all rigid and bow-like. He really seems extremely, like, what would be his state of mind when he wakes up? I mean, he might not be happy about it, uh, but he does seem rather calm. Literary term. His calmness would be an example of what? Because you would certainly expect him to be much more upset about it. Opposite of what you expect. One of your... Vocab terms that you actually have for this week. Situational. 
irony. It's the total opposite of what you would expect. So um, his, his demeanor about the whole situation certainly would kind of make you question, is this really going on, you know, physically? Or is this more of a, of a simple mental thing that would be taking place? Um, going back to our sheet then from uh, yesterday. Uh, so we talked about the picture in Gregor's room um, on page 3 and 13. Um, thoughts about his job. We know that he has a pretty strong dislike for it. Most of these things are going in chronological order. Um, dislike for his job. He has oops, a lot of thoughts about it. Start showing off on page 4. Um, page 6 is where he kind of mentions about the, uh, the minion and all that kind of stuff. Um, his concerns upon waking, since we pretty much just seem to be getting uh, mentioning this part. What's his primary concern when he wakes up? Oh man, I'm late for work. I gotta do it. Wait for work. And it's not a direct quote for him necessarily, but yeah, his main concern is to getting to work on time, not letting anyone, especially his parents, down. He does not want to be a burden to other people. So page five, page six is really when he kind of gets into uh, his whole concerns about waking up. Um, he's concerned that the dream maybe that he's having will not go away. He wants to avoid criticism from his boss. He wakes, he's supposed to wake up at four o'clock. Anyone recall the time the first train would be leaving out? Five o'clock would be the train. And he already is thinking that there's probably like an errand boy from the company who would not be calling, but would be reporting back that, hey, Gregor didn't show up for work boss. What are you going to do about it? And then, of course, you know, the boss ends up showing up. So his primary concerns when he wakes up, work, family, I think the big thing would be his primary concern when he wakes up is not about why am I a bug. So he does not seem concerned at least too much about being a bug. Yesterday, uh, when we were coming to the end of the period, we were getting to the setup of his overall room. Um, mentioned that he has three doors. He keeps all of them locked. So you certainly do have some clues of maybe some isolation taking place. Anyone recall detail why he locks his doors? What's his job? Traveling salesman. So you're staying in a lot of places you're unfamiliar with. If you're in a place that you don't know, what do you do? You naturally lock your doors. So he's used to always being on the road. So he locks his doors, not so much because, or at least you would assume, not because he likes his, does, dislikes his family, but it's more so something that he would do kind of out of habit, um, which at this point he's kind of happy about it. But the setup of his room, especially with that whole idea about some isolation taking place, this would be a potential symbol that we would be looking at. It is symbolic of how he is separate, he is apart, he is away from everyone. Um, there's a definite barrier or separation between him and the family. Um, overall setup of his room, you're going to be getting a lot of those things showing up here on page three, um, six, seven. So, Lane, you want to shut the door real quick since we'll be getting some traffic coming in? Who tries to wake up Gregor first? No, his, his mom's like, you died there. Gregor, time to get up. Yeah. First person ends up being mom. Um, how does mom knock on the door? Okay. Uh, after mom, who's next? 50-50 proposition here. Father. Sister. His boss. Brings it. 
Why is it you say father, two people say sister, and then all of a sudden you're going sister? Have you no confidence in yourself whatsoever? In my first one, it was just saying that I was wrong. As a, short, as a result of a short conversation, the other family members became aware of the fact that Gregor was unexpectedly still at home, and already his father was knocking on one side door weakly, but with his fist. Gregor, Gregor, he called. What's going on? After a short while, he urged them on again in a deeper voice. Gregor, Gregor. At the other side door, however, his sister knocked lightly. Gregor, are you all right? Do you need anything? So you have Luke, who's number two? Fire. Father. So we have light knocking with mother. We have knocking now with a fist. With father. And then you have sister, Greta, who seems to be a little bit more concerned. pages six and seven this is taking place so in his room you would have one door in the front two side doors wherever there is a door there is a person who's kind of knocking so he cannot get away people are constantly after him kind of, and in some ways kind of pestering him why does he need to get to work from especially parents' viewpoint, probably father the most, because Gregor brings in the money. Of the people who work, or the people who live in the house, Gregor is the only one with a job. Who's in the house before the manager shows up? You got Gregor, you got Greta, you have mom, you have dad. It's tech, it's technically an apartment. There'll be things later on where uh, where they talk about the stairwell and the hallway and all that kind of stuff. But no, so he. He has his own space in the apartment, so far it is his bedroom, so that would be his own thing. There's a picture of him in his military uniform, like kind of out in the kitchen and whatnot. Um, chances are, and, and you know, you can kind of think around how our own homes and stuff would be set up. All your parents, especially moms, probably have a picture of whether it be a kid in military uniform. Maybe it's Logan in his Cub Scout uniform back when he was cute and adorable. Luke standing there in his football clothes, like Slippery Rock being swarmed up by his pads and this massive helmet that would be on his head. It's probably a picture where mom's kind of like proud of him. Um, but in Gregor's room, the only thing that he has is that picture of a woman who he's never met, as you assume, does not know. So of all the things that he puts importance on, it's on someone who he's never met. So it seems that he would certainly kind of be alone with it. Um, but in the house, there's one other person besides the four of them were in the family. Two parents, two kids. The mess or the, the mailman. The mailman, the messenger. Didn't he like get scared off? Me, me. There's a servant girl. I was gonna say that. I think about the boss. The boss should comes in. Right, you know, when he uh, realizes that what Gregor is his father, all that kind of stuff. But think about this. Gregor is the only one with the job. He is the one bringing in the money. If he's the only one, you would assume, because he doesn't seem to be the most important person in his office, that he's probably not bringing in a ton of money that, is, that the family is going to be able to live off of, you know, with, with ease. If Gregor doesn't work, there's a main problem. If money is an issue, what's probably the easiest way to eliminate a cost? Don't hire a servant girl. And this isn't a slave or anything like that by any means. This would be a person who you are paying money. Um, what would the servant girl be expected to do? Cook, clean, laundry, that kind of stuff. What does Greta do? Stay at home. 
What does dad do? Stay at home. What does mom do? Stay at home. So it is a certain creature comfort that they would be allowed to have. Um, Gregor doesn't seem upset by it by any means. But, you know, what are the dire situation that this family is in? Seems as if their values might be a little messed up uh, when it comes to money. If money's supposedly tight, we're still going to hire a servant girl. Not in a literal sense. Well, why doesn't he leave? Well, even before that, because he would feel guilt. So, so far as his, you know, relationship with the family, um, you can certainly tell that he loves them. Um, but when it, you know, the, the response to the family seeing Gregor, and we've already kind of mentioned these words, that they're disgusted, they're scared, and all that kind of stuff. We don't have a thing, what's Gregor's response to the family? He seems to care for them really deeply. And if he would be letting them down, then this would be absolutely a, a, a drastic, terrible thing to, to take place. You think about what we were reading with the letters last week with Kafka about his father. Um, dad is very overbearing, in charge, all of those things. With the family setup that you have here, um, how's he get hurt? He gets stuck in the door. And then dad, like, kicks and pushes him in with a cane. So he's kind of stuck in the door. Oh, Jesus. A little dramatic factor that was kind of taking place. Um, stuck in the door, dad kicks and pushes him with a cane. Now, I think maybe there could be a little bit lost in translation. I don't think you really push anybody with a cane. You don't really kind of like nudge someone forward. If you have a cane and you're trying to get that object to move, what are you doing? You're hitting it. You're beating it pretty far. Uh, so this is probably also a little bit more of an attack that would kind of be taking place. So in some ways, who is kind of becoming the antagonist, or I don't want to say the villain, but certainly the one where there seems to be a little bit of a conflict taking place? Seems to be the dad. Maybe the dad thinks that the giant bug ate him. Spelling test. How do you spell the author's last name? K -A Author. K A F K A. Oh. A. Kick a. Kick a. No. Kick a. What's Gregor's last name? Kafka. See anything? Pattern wise? Two A's. Two A's. Two S's. The K's are the S's and the M's are the F's. So what happens with these letters? It's the same letter in both instances, but they repeat. Two K's, repeat in the same spot. Two S's, repeat in the same spot as, as the K's. So there certainly does seem to be some strong similarities between Kafka and Samsa, almost as if he kind of places himself into the story a little bit. So far, his relationship that would be taking place with his father. Um, remember that we said that Gregor stays at home until, or not, excuse me, Gregor. Franz Kafka stays at home until he's 31 years old. His family, his sister is the one who takes care of him. If you start reading part two, if you haven't already, pay attention to the more parallel 